This week, we'll start talking about GRIB, the format that so much data still gets shipped around and even stored in, but is actually pretty difficult to work with. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I'm gonna start a couple videos on working with GRIB data. This is something that's very often requested because there's still a lot of data out there in the GRIB format. And unfortunately, it's not an overly friendly format. It was originally designed to be a transmission format to very efficiently send data out across the wires. And it really wasn't ever meant to be a storage format, but it's become that. And as you'll see, it's message-based, meaning that there are a sequence of messages in this GRIB file, and we have to scroll through it and try to find the data we're looking for. There are a couple of different ways you can deal with it, and I want to show you a pitfall that I've recently hit and how I've used PyGRIB to solve that. All right, so let's go ahead and do our imports. I'm going to import X-Ray as XR, import NumPy as MP, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import pygrib, I'm going to import cartapy.crs as ccrs, and I'm going to import cartapy.feature as cfeature. All right, so the first way that you might find when you're Googling on how to open grib datasets is actually by using X-Array. So X-Array can open GRIB using the CF GRIB engine. So let's give that a shot. I've obtained a GRIB file uh, from the National Weather Service NDFD. So this is going to be an apparent temperature file, apparent temperature forecast for the, the present time. So our data set is going to be X-Array.open data set. And my file is ds.apt.bin. And I specify that the engine is going to be the CF Grib engine. All right, so let's look at dataset. We now get this really nice table representation where we can dig in and look at the de details of this X-ray dataset. Uh, we've got our time and our time step, and there's our parameter. But let's for now just see if we can get a rough view of the data. So my time zero data set, I'm going to use dataset.icell to select by index. I'm going to select time step zero. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this data set to see what's there. I'm going to use IM show. And it is our T0 data set. And then param ID underscore zero is the, the name of the variable where our data are stored. And we get something that looks a little bit more like a Rorschach test here. And I'm not exactly sure what's going on other than that it appears to me that every other line is reversed. So we've got some of Florida over here and some of Florida over here. So this is the United States mirrored about a central axis and then combined. Uh, so there's clearly some sort of a parsing problem with this GRIB data set. And really, we haven't been able to nail down exactly what's going on here. It could be an error in the GRIB encoding, or it could be CF GRIB doing something a little funny. But I often want to use GRIB files from the National Weather Service, and this gets in the way. So now let's look at PyGRIB, which you can install from the ContaForge channel. So we've already imported PyGRIB, and I am going to read in with pygrib.open my dataset. And I'm going to assign it to the variable name GRBS because there are many GRIB messages in here. So that's GRIBs. And we will want to go through those messages. This is a continuous stream. And so you need to use seek like you would on a file to set where your file pointer is. Uh, I think it's always a good matter of habit to set seek to zero at the very beginning, just so you're sure you're at the beginning of the file. And let's iterate through all the grib messages and just see what we've got. So for grib in gribs, print grib. 
When we do that, we see that we have 43 different grid messages. And these are in uh, Lambert projection, height above ground, level two meters, forecast time, the number of hours from this date time there. Okay, so now we know we've got all these grid messages. Let's go get one. So what do we need to do first? We need to seek. I'm gonna seek back to zero. And then I'm going to get the first grid message, which you would think would look something like this, but let's try that. No, grid messages start at one. So grid messages are one index and that is reflected in the API of PyGrib. So grid number one. Let's see what we've got. All right, so this is forecast time one hour from uh, 1700 here. All right, now how can we view this data? Well, that actually turns out to be pretty simple. So we're going to do a plot.im show on grib.values, which is a masked array. And there we have the forecast. It's upside down and not projected, but you can see basically where the outline of the coast is and then the small offshore area that the weather service is also responsible for. Okay, so let's make a proper map out of this. First, we need to have our map coordinate reference system. What do we want our map in? Uh, I'm going to be partial generally for the continental United States to the Lambert conformal map uh, with a central longitude of about minus 100 and a central latitude of 35. Let's go with standard parallels of 30 and 60 degrees. All right, so what about our data? The data are not in Lambert conformal, or at least the lats and lons from them aren't. So we're going to make a data CRS, and they are just in lat lon, which is plat curie. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a cell above because we do actually need the lats and lons. So lats and lawns are going to be grb.latlons. Okay, so now we can start making our map. I'm going to make a figure, so plot.figure, and figure one, I'm gonna make the fig size to be something like 14 by 12. Again, that's whatever's configured in your matplotlibrc, generally inches. And we'll make an axis using plot.subplot. Uh, it is one axis, first row, first column, first axis. All right, and then we're going to specify the projection is going to be our map CRS. I'm going to set the extent on that axis to be from minus 130 to minus 72 and 20 to 55. And again, don't forget, we need to specify that those are in plot Curie, which actually we can just say is our data CRS. Though if you did change your data CRS, it might change the extents. So that's something to be careful of, whether you want to hard code a uh, plat Curie there or not. Okay, we're going to add some features so we know where we are. So I'm going to add C feature dot coastline. And I'm going to use with scale of 50. We're going to add another feature of states, same scale. And finally, we're going to call contour F because I want to do a filled contour plot. For our filled contour plot, we're going to have lawns and lats and our data, which remember was grb.values. And we specify that the transform is the data CRS which we have an underscore in data CRS. And this is gonna take a little bit to run. This is a pretty large area, a lot of data points, and we're contouring. So in future weeks, we're going to go a little bit deeper into GRIB. We're going to talk some more about how GRIB works 
and we're going to look at some more advanced things we can do because once you start pulling uh, date and times out of different messages and going through all the messages, things can get a little bit more complicated. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward in time while this plot finishes up and look at the result. Okay, so we've got our plot. And there we go, we have an apparent temperature plot. And it looks like we've done a good job with our georeferencing because we're right on the state lines. And then we are a certain number of nautical miles off the coast for the forecast responsibility. All right, so I hope that you found this useful and we'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.